Let your heart shine bright. Let us take you to what is right. Let your heart shine bright. Let us take you to what is right. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين ما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وصحابك يا نور الله. Peace be upon you, brothers and viewers of Madani Channel. Welcome back to our program tonight with Madani Channel. Alhamdulillah, so we are a very important topic we're going to be discussing today. Hopefully, inshallah, so we are we're going to start in a few minutes. I want to give you a scenario. Two friends or three friends, they went into a shop and. One friend had no clue as what was going to happen. The other two had something in their mind. They had something planned. And they all three go into a shop. And one of them, he starts to steal. And he takes a, a pen and he puts it into his pocket. The other one does that as well. And both of them are now looking at the third person that is with them. And, you know, from their eyes and from their looks, it, it looks like, that they are telling him something to do. And he quickly takes a pen and puts one in his pocket. And all three of them walk outside the shop. Now that person who was forced or who was in, in, in a pressure, he was asked the question. He, he asked them questions that, I can't believe that you made me do that. And the other two, they said that, you know, everyone does it in their lifetime. So why is it that, you know, if you have done something, and then he says that we didn't tell you to do it. We didn't tell you to do anything. Now he says that that person, he was in that pressure, even though his friends did not verbally say anything to him, but he still went with their pressure and he stole that <coughs> pen as well. According to law, all of them are thieves. But this is what our topic about today is. You know, every person, when you're a, you're a child, your parents usually choose your friends putting you in a play group or arranging play, play areas with certain, certain children that they know or they love. Now that you're older, you decide your own friends and what groups you need to spend time with. Your friends, your peers are people your age to close to you who have experience and interests similar to yours. You and your friends make dozens of decisions every day and you influence each other's choices and behavior. As you become more older, now what's going to happen is you spend a lot of more time away from home, away from your parents, away from your siblings, and you spend more time with your friends. You'll probably develop a close friendship with some of your peers, and you'll feel connected to them that they are like an extended family. My dear Islam brothers and viewers of Madani Channel, if you are a teenager and you are watching this program, this program is specially for you. If you are the parents and you have teenagers, this is a program that is specially for you. Inshallah, so today we're going to be discussing about peer pressure. How our, our youngsters, especially our teenagers, fall into this category. Now, peer pressure doesn't have to be bad all the time. There could be good peer pressure. For example, someone has become a hafiz of the Quran, someone has become an alim a deen, and you know you have that pressure inside yourself that I need to achieve the same as well. That is a good pressure. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to highlight the bad peer pressure, and we'll also talk about the good one as well. Alhamdulillah, Azawajal, we've got Harun Bay, mashallah, Azawajal, uh, in the studio. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, are you okay, mashallah? Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Subhanallah. The topic for today is peer pressure. If you want, if you want to start off. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, it's a very, very important topic because a lot of us will say that we're not influenced by peer pressure. But in fact, every day of our lives, we are. Um, as human beings, 
often the way that Allah Zawajal has designed us, we actually take a lot of information in from our surroundings and that information influences our decisions and what we do. Now, where our surroundings are strong, then the influence is greater. And when I say strong, for example, a lot of youngsters can relate to this, where if one person asks them to do something wrong, the norms, the social norms, the Islamic etiquette, the Islamic rules, the understanding of Quran and Hadith, that as children we get instilled into us through madrasa, through the teachings of our parents, those will hold strong. So you got one person, in, for example, saying, come on, let's have a drink. And the young man will say, uh, the, the young girl will say, no, 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 this is against my religion and everything else. And they'll probably try and lecture the person who's trying to influence them. Now that's one type of uh, one-to-one -one scenario of uh, peer pressure. Now, in that, there is a risk. And you need to look at whether this person is you know, the right person for you to be hanging around with, but that's not my point here. The real problem comes is this. When there is one person who, in isolation, say you're in a park or somewhere else, and he says, oh, you know, here, have a drink, and you say, no, you're strong enough to do that. Now let's change the environment. You're out with the boys. There are five or six of them. Uh, you're in a car. Um, you are perhaps, you know, where you shouldn't be going to a club or something like that. And then in the midst of that, with all these lads, you're being offered drugs. They're all taking a pill or they're all having a drink. Now in that environment, the same rules apply. When it was one-to-one, -one, you said, no, no, this is against my religion. This, But there is this extra added pressure. And that really is peer pressure at its extreme. So what people do is they don't want to do it, mm. but they feel compelled to do certain actions because of the group they're in, what the people think of me. So they will go to the extremes of doing this. Now, um, the, the problem has occurred, or the foundation for this um, deception of the shaitan has come early on. It has come when you've stepped into the wrong environment. When you've stepped with the wrong people, you've gone to the wrong place. A lot of people, the shaitan convinces that, TKG, I'm going with these wrong people, but I will not do wrong. And for centuries, the, the proven facts are that, you know, uh, nick, uh, if you're with the good people, nick people, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then um, you will always do the good things. If you're with the bad people, you'll do the bad things. I think there was a famous couplet that if you sit at a perfume shop, you may not buy the perfume, you but smell of you will smell of the perfume yeah. because you sat in a perfume shop. You know, if you sit in a, at a blacksmith, the sparks flying from the metal that they're making and the striking will burn your clothes. And that's the example that the pious predecessors have given, that no matter how good you are, and this is where, you know, as youngsters, our parents always used to say that stay away from bad company and used to mm -hmm. say, you know, oh, we've all been through it, you know, oh, it's me, you know, I'm strong enough and I'm this mm -hmm. and I'm that. Oh, gee, what, what, what do the parents know? Well, you know, having been there and done that, you thought, oh my God, they, they were exactly right. There's no way that you can be with the wrong people and protect yourself. There can be no way where you're with the wrong people and you can stay away from sin and guna. And it's, it's a very interesting um, social or psychological um, state of mind because it, re it replies to you the way as well, have said. So if, you know, somebody is a Benamazi, and he hangs around it. Say he's out with the lads again. And all the lads are, you know, all the boys are namazi, they're, you know, pious. And they say, right, now we're out for a meal or whatever. It's Maghrib time. So mm -hmm. they pull over the car and they say, Wuzukari, we'll go to the local mosque, we'll read the mosque. Is he going to say, no, I'll stay in the car? Even though he doesn't read. Mm -hmm. He's going to come with you. He's going to come with you. Yeah. So it works the other way as well. So he's going to say, okay, I'm going to come with you. If he's out, and the, you know, a lot of youngsters go out. So, you know, uh, one of the things that Madni Channel and on Madni Channel we try to do is, is kind of help people. 
if you're out with uh, the lads and you're having a good laugh and say for example something tempts you or you want to do something and those people say no no that's wrong you shouldn't be doing that that's against the Quran and the Hadith even though you've got five friends who are telling you would you go and do it never no you stop now that is peer pressure at its best so it it's a it's a very interesting phenomenon but a lot of the time our youngsters they get exposed to this peer pressure now and there's a different type of peer pressure now as well and this is very interesting because in the olden days it was who you went out with, who you associated with, who you spent time with, and the friend circle that you had. Now, you've got this social media platform, and I know what you're saying, you know what Alex is saying. So, basically, to conform on there, what the shaitan does is say, well, I'll just say it on the group, isn't it? Nobody knows, and uh, it doesn't mean anything. But the shaitan makes you open up probably makes you lie about the, the things that you have done and then builds up this concept in your mind. So if you, for example, if people are talking about drugs and somebody says, yeah, yeah, I've tried this, I've tried that, and he keeps saying that, eventually, if they ever get together, he will say, well, you know, I'm known for it now. It's become, it's become my mark. So he will then very easily take that step. And this is all traps of the shaitan. Peer pressure is in different forms. So there's the one-to-one. There is the unspoken, you know, other people are doing it, I've got to follow the crowd, yeah. right? In that case, you know, a lot of teenagers, they fall into the wrong actions because they think following the crowd. Now, a lot of people might think, well, I don't, I don't do that. Actually, you do. All the fashions that you copy, you know, when you go to the barbers and you have that funny haircut. Yeah, yeah. That's following someone. That's following yeah. somebody. Yeah. You know, whether it's, in, this is peer pressure, you, you're trying to conform to some norms in the particular part of society that you live. So if you lived in a country, if say, for example, you lived in a certain particular state of America, you would conform to the norms of that country. If you live in a particular village in Pakistan, you would conform to the, that. You, you wouldn't go and wear a, a three-piece suit in a village in Pakistan and go out to read namaz, would you? But if you're in the, in, in the middle of London and you're living there and you go, you know, you would get away with that. So that every society, every culture has its norms. Mm-hmm. And we tend to adopt the choices. Now, the fashions of the time, we're adopting. You will not get a youngster, a teenager, wearing something which is out of fashion. This I'd rather die than do that. Why? Because that fashion has influenced their mind. And now, then interactions, the way they speak. A lot of youngsters think they're not influenced. When they talk, they talk in that lingo and they flick their hands about. Mm-hmm. And you think, you know, he's copying. And some, sometimes it's subconscious. They, they've seen something they think is cool. They don't know how what they're doing. They, well don't, they don't know, you know, or they, they've picked up. I mean, some of them, it's unfortunate. They watch these um, rapster movies, gangster mm-hmm. movies. And then every second, they think swearing is cool. So mm-hmm. every second word, they're swearing. I've had a few where obviously when you're talking to them, they don't want to swear. This is a habit. So they're coming out with it. So all of this actually proves that we're heavily influenced by everything around us. So there's direct, there's unspoken peer pressure of those that do. There's direct peer pressure of people, you, friends will tell you, people will tell you how to behave. And then there's, you know, negatives and positive peer pressures, the different things. But amazingly, you know what the scholars write? That as parents, you can actually uh, influence your children through peer pressure. Yeah. In a family environment, yeah. you can change your family environment through peer pressure. It's a social, uh, psychological kind of tool. You can influence a society uh, into not committing crimes simply because of uh, peer pressure. And this is what a lot of these uh, campaigns do. They make it socially acceptable or socially unacceptable to do certain things. Let me give you a very interesting example. Many, many years ago, there was uh, a campaign. And what had happened is for, for many decades in this country, they'd been battling drink driving. And they tried to increase the sentences, they tried different things and everything else. And they struggled with this because people just weren't listening and weren't obeying. Then, very interestingly, there came a time where somebody developed a different theory. They said, the only way we're going to stop this is if you make it socially unacceptable to do this. So that everybody, that you're 
normal man on the street thinks this is just socially, societally unacceptable, mm -hmm. and then people will not do it, not because they're scared of the law, because they're scared of what society will think. So if, if, if you make it unacceptable that somebody in your street is, a, a for example, a drunk driver, people will hate him. Indeed. And they did that. They had massive media campaigns costing millions of pounds to do that. And it, it, it came to that stage where the number of drink drivers came down drastically. Indeed. And it was, it was kind of proof that we are not influenced by the laws. We're not influenced by the punishments. We're not influenced by different... We are influenced by what society is around us and what it does. And that is what our pious predecessors have been saying for centuries. That it, no matter what you do, it is the environment that you're in. If you have a good friend, you'll have a good environment. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna, you're going to do good because you'll be watching them as well. If you have a bad friend, then obviously, just like that uh, opening remarks I mentioned about them, friends are going to a shop, and you know they were bad friends. So even that, the, the third person didn't want to do anything, but yet he still got caught up in that, and he's gonna class himself as a thief as well for his life. So in the same way. This peer pressure that you mentioned is uh, no doubt again. You mentioned the hadith of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. You know, everything that Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said was divinely inspired. And the Naya Mubarak of the glorious Quran in relation to that as well. Now, uh, one of the beauties of the hadith of Mubarak was, you know, a lot of the times, Hafiz, we look for these words of wisdom. We look, we look to different texts to try and find Indeed. words. And we try and think, okay, um, if somebody could tell me something that's really, really kind of has so many pearls of wisdom you could write a book on it, we look for that sort of thing. You will not find anything better than the Hadith of Mubarak of Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa And you know what the scholars say, that Aka sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every word Mubarak was jami. It was, it was, it had so many different meanings for different contexts, for different people. And one of the things that Aka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said was that you are on the deen of your friend. Subhanallah. And today, you know, society moves on 1460 years and they say, you know, your friends influence you. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that. Yes, sure. And so what you've got to do is, you see, it's very difficult to go down the road and then to really stop yourself once you're, you know, say you're traveling from here to London and it's, it's a journey you shouldn't be making. Yeah. If you're close to London, then you try to turn around, you'll struggle. But if at the outset you think, where am I going and why am I going, it'll be a lot easier for you. Now, what a lot of people do is they set off on this path of uh, the wrong thing in the misconception that I am in control. And the shaitan takes them so far that he wraps them up. We need to achieve piety. And to achieve piety, we need to stay with the right people. You know, even if you have, we were talking about peer pressure. If you have that pressure, have that pressure of good people, like someone's become a Hafiz Quran, uh, another question, I'm just going to come back to that hadith in Mubarakah. What Nabi Karim said, I've got a couple Salaam of said, questions from well, viewers well, as well. You're on the deen of your friend. Yeah? Now, looking at that hadith in Mubarakah, what essentially uh, we're being uh, told is that right at the outset, if you choose the wrong friend, <laughs> you will struggle. Ji. But if you have the right people, so if you have the right environment, yeah. Look at, let me give you, you know they often say the proof is in the pudding. There is. There are so many of us, alhamdulillah, born and bred in this country effectively. We've spent all our lives here. We've had the influences. We've, we've seen that there is a lot out there that you can distract you and everything else. And from the age of about 20, 25, alhamdulillah, I mean, we were blessed with the Madni environment of Dawah Islam. A lot of people who see us on Madni channel think, oh, these guys, you know, they've always, you know, been, always and, been in the always, and so many people who are in the Madni environment Environment, lived a different life, but they had their friends, they had their peer pressures and everything else. But Allah blessed them and they saw that this was leading them to the wrong way. So what they didn't, you know, we didn't come on, you didn't come on uh, into the Madni Mahal to become a Maballa, you didn't come into the Madni Mahal to, you know, do bayans or to, it was one of the, nothing in mind. Nothing, nothing in, mind. in mind. And what you did is, all you did is associated yourself with a righteous environment, Jeez. right? And Alhamdulillah, I mean, gradually over time, that righteous environment and the nigah of a wali of Allah, you know, a pious servant of Allah has cleansed the, the muridin, you know, the, the followers and the, the spiritually to make them, bring them closer to Allah and His Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what it was, say for example, you had set out to try and do what you do 
but without the Madni environment of Dawat Islami. I don't think we would have got very no. far. I think you'll, 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 uh, you'll uh, agree with me as well. There's been so many friends that we used to have. And now when you look at the, uh, you know, you look at them and you look at the past and, you know, I, I can remember Harun Bayda. We had a lot of pressure. You know, we used, we used, we used to go to a game of football. Oh, come on, you're going to spoil the game by leaving us. And then you think to yourself, what am I going to do? Play with them? or go to the masjid and read the namaz and then you think to yourself no i think namaz is better salah is better so you know think it back and think, ya allah thank you you know so I, I chose the right path even though we were under that pressure mm -hmm. but we were we, we had that fear one we had the fear of our parents because you know they're gonna if they find out that we haven't offered our salah and they're gonna ask us you know we have to lie so might as well just forget these friends and join and well, alhamdulillah coming into the environment we found so many good friends. You know, a lot of, I'm not just saying this for the sake of saying it. I've been there. Um, we've been with friends through college, university and all that where, you know, you went out, you had a good laugh and everything else. And then I've, I've had the other side where, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, you were traveling in Madni Kaflas of Dawit Islami and the brothers were coming waking you up for Tahajjud in the morning and you were getting up for Fajr in the morning and you know, you're doing a Madni Halka Fajr. And honestly, hand on heart, Hafizab, if you compare the two, there's no comparison. And this is why once the brothers get a taste of this, they think, oh my God, where, where have I been? What have I been doing? You know, there was one brother, I remember, he was a bit of a gangster. And uh, we went on a Madni Kafla, and I still remember it to this day. And uh, you know when he came in, he was like, oh, he's coming. This, this lad's, you know, one of the jack the lads. He, he's, he's one of the it syndrome boys, yeah. And when he came into the Madni Kafla on Friday night, he's like the, the main man and people, you know, talking to him and everything else. And then he's learning a bit as well. And I don't want this food. You know, in the mm. olden days, you remember Karu and even Ayan. So we used to cook them. We used to get the uh, uh, mother of your children to bake. One of the Islamic brothers used to get the uh, family to cook and bring the handy. And we used to get the roti and everything else. So it was that sort of flex. And he's like, I ain't eating that. I, I, I want takeaway. So, and you remember in those days, there was no rewards for takeaway. So he's like, he wants to take So he thought, okay. So the uh, Islamic brothers entertained him. So they got him some food and everything else. So the next day again, he's like, Saturday night, I, you know. And gradually, and you know, Sunday night, honestly, I, I'm going to remember this probably for the rest of my life. Sunday night, you know, when you like you clean up the mosque after like Asad time and everything else, you do the hoover and everything else, and you clean up everything and every all the brothers chip in to put something into the masjid and everything else. This brother's gone really quiet. And in the end, um, brothers are packing their stuff and putting it in the car and, you know, all the pillows and the gumbel and everything else. And he starts to cry, he says, I don't want to go home. He, says, he, times, says, yeah. he said, for the first time in my life, I found peace. I ain't going home, I'm staying here. So we, like the brothers are explaining to him, look, you can't stay here. We're in a masjid and you've got to go home. We had two days in Jazat, everything else. Yeah. And at the time, it wasn't one of the Davut Islami Pazana Medinas as well. It was a, it was a normal uh, mashallah, uh, Sunni masjid. And uh, it, was, it was really interesting because he, he point blank refused to go home. He insisted that I want to stay. And eventually, the Islamic brothers convinced him that there would be further the Madani Kaflas and look, you've got to go home and everything else. And Alhamdulillah, this is what really, and what had happened is this, he tasted the fruit of a garden that he didn't want to come away from. And this is the problem, we never taste that. Subhanallah. Uh, we're going to go to a beautiful kalam that we have for you today, mashallah. Uh, we will we, we try to fit the kalam in today. So let's go towards listening to this beautiful kalam and we'll be back straight away with our topic, inshallah. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مانگ لو مانگ لو چشم تر مانگ لو درد دل اور حسن نظر مانگ لو سبز گم بد کے سائے میں گھر مانگ لو مانگنے کا مزا रात है आज या
کو تکلف ہے ہم سے اگر ہم بھی بے بس نہیں بے سہارا نہیں فاصلوں کو تکلف ہے ہم سے اگر ہم بھی بے بس نہیں بے سہارا نہیں خود انہی کو پکاریں گے ہم دور سے راستے میں اگر پاؤں تھک جائیں گے یا رسول اللہ سلام علیہ مدینے میں تنہا نکل جائیں گے اور گلیوں میں قصدن بھٹک جائیں گے ہم مدینے میں تنہا نکل جائیں گے قصدن بھٹک جائیں گے ہم وہاں جا کے واپس نہیں آئیں گے ڈھونڈتے ڈھونڈتے لوگ تھک جائیں گے یا رسول اللہ یا نبی مدینے کے ظاہر خدا کے لیے داستان سفر مجھ کو یوں مت سونا اے مدینے کے ظاہر خدا کے لیے داستان سفر مجھ کو یوں مت سونا دل تڑپ جائے گا بات بڑھ جائے گی میرے موہتات آنسو چھلک جائیں گے یا رسول اللہ سلام چشم کرم کو 
है इस की खबर किस मुसाफिर को है कितना शौक सफर उनकी चश में करम को है इस की खबर किस मुसाफिर को है कितना शौक सफर हमको एक बाल जब भी इजाजत मिली हम भी आका के दरबार तक जाएंगे या रसूल या Mashallah Zodal hope you enjoyed this beautiful kalam and alhamdulillah you did the ziyarat of uh, the beautiful Rozai Park of the Prophet um, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam may Allah ta'ala give me and all of us the ability to visit the beautiful Rozai Park of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and to do umrah again and again inshallah in Makkah Park amen ji pyare islam bhai alhamdulillah Zodal i've got a question uh, from uh, a viewer As- assalamu alaikum i'm watching your program can you help me to control myself from peer pressure so this is a young lad who's asking us how he can control himself with all this peer peer pressure what can he do you see there's a science there's an old rule of science here that you you have to fill any space Gee. you can't have a vacuum and um, now what happens is this a lot of us what we try to do is we want to stay away from our friends but we don't give ourselves an alternative so when you sat at home twiddling your thumbs you think oh for, forget it and the shaitan takes over you. but you you replace your time for example say for example i go out every night with my mates between 7 and 9 it's a has a habit we've got Indeed. now if i don't go out between 7 and 9 i'm going to be restless and because i can't be sat at home doing nothing so what happens is i have to fill that time alternative so if i make the habit of say for example between 7 and 9 i start a uh, balighan class so every 3 4 days a week i'm at the mosque um reading learning the quran in that environment how many new friends do you make lots yeah mm. and i know that we we started one in our local masjid and the people who were involved in the original class yeah the first one we started i think it was about may 16 it was 
you can grow. Firstly, they still come to the mass to pray regularly, Jamaat. Uh, uh, and the second thing is, they are almost best buddies. Now, they probably didn't know each other before that class. And they, they hang around together. After namaz, they stood outside talking for hours. You know, and they become... So, these people must have had an environment before that. They must have had peer pressure. Indeed. They must have had friends. But they changed. If you want to get away from your circle of friends, you've got to give yourself an alternative. Start a course, do online courses, do something in the evening, read the Quran, go spend time with family. Have an alternative in place and it will help you take your mind off things. And if you, you know, and then the other thing is, I've said, and I said this to a lot of the youngsters, mm -hmm. you can find the right friends. I, I see this, you know, as I was growing up, we, I was with uh, three of my very close friends and we kind of went through uh, we were together through college and university we didn't go to the same universities we went to different universities but we always stuck together and alhamdulillah uh, they became lawyers as well and um, we've always kind of been we've been all over the world we've traveled to different countries everywhere else but i've mentioned this before as well whatever we want one of them is the hafiz of quran as well and it was like, namaz is the most important. We'll have a good Bishop. laugh. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll go for a meal. We'll have a good laugh. But namaz was the most important thing. And, you know, even when we went away, I, we went to Morocco, we went to other places. In the morning, we'd all get up. Fajr Pari, we'd read the Quran. We'd plan our day. We'd go to visit beautiful mosques. We'd go, we had, you know, ziyarats and everything else. And so that was the environment. Now, out there, there will be your mates who just want to get in that fast car, put a pipe on the exhaust and burn down, up and down the road. And, mm. you know, and sometimes they, you know, you, you stood there, you think, he's gone around this block once and he's going around it again. And, he, you know, they mm. come up and down. I mean, don't they get bored? And there's those types of people. Or you can hang around with the proper people who are characters and they will help you change your life. So replace your friends. Sometimes it may sound easier than it is, but you have to put an effort in and you will find the right people. And Sometimes, you, you know, you, you can, as they say, listen to your gut as well. You know, see what you, you know, are you comfortable with that as well? You know, like I can remember Khalid be once talking about a young lad and he goes, look, this is not me. I, it's just because I'm with my friends, I'm yeah, going to dress that. up like that. You know, so again, ask yourself as well, if that's not you, then you don't have to be like them. You don't have to be hanging around street corners. You don't have to be joyriding with them because end of the day, what's going to happen is you are not comfortable in that environment. And if you're not comfortable, don't join them. So that's one thing to stay away from them. There's another question similar to that. Uh, they say that uh, Islam brother, he says that, uh, you know, um, I don't feel comfortable in saying no to my friends. It, it, is, it isn't like saying no to them. But he says most of the time we do end up doing wrong things. He hasn't mentioned what wrong things, good thing. But he, so basically he's got a, a friend circle. He, he doesn't want to do it. He's pressurized into it. But he doesn't want to say no to them as well. I think that to an extent, I don't want to sound unfair, uh, but that to an extent is a bit of weakness and a cowardice. And it's a strong word I use, but I use it for this reason. You know a lot of brothers when you say, can we go on a Madni Kafla, let's go to the Masjid, let's do this. They can say no straight away. Gee. And they do. You and I have experienced it many times. Yet, when it comes to these people who do know are a bad influence, they know that. That's why they, they, you know, they, they're, they're there and they're concerned. But then it's all about standing up. You see, it's all about sabr. It's all about having the patience and having the belief. And having the, you know, the yakin that Allah Azzawajal is watching. If Allah Azzawajal, you have the firm belief that Allah Azzawajal is watching, then you will take the actions. Now, saying no is, you know, it, it just reminds me of a saying of uh, Amir I've, got, of I've got someone here, he says, one of the, reason, one of the things that I used to say was, my mom's going to kill me <laughs> if I do this. So they used to say, Rat Uja. <laughs> yeah, so that's another way out. Blame me onto the parents. Oh, my mom's going to kill me if I do that. So what happened? This is another way of, you know, getting out of the situation. It, it, it's taking out the, 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 the yeah. it's removing that pressure around because you don't want to feel weak. You don't want to feel like you're not strong enough to do the mm. certain things or, you know, you've given into pressure. So you can pass the pressure on and pass the book on. But uh, uh, what you've got to avoid, you see, the reality of this is Hafsa. Even if you and I were to put ourselves in that environment where we are, you know, so far out that you've got n no choice, just 10 people. If we put ourselves in that position and we're being fired with so much peer pressure, then ask yourself, what am I doing here? Mm. And that's the key to it. What am I doing? If I feel uncomfortable, 
Yeah, why am I here? And honestly, I'll tell you hand on heart, yeah. I have had to give up certain groups of friends who I they didn't do anything wrong. Alhamdulillah, Rabbilan, but all they used to do is we would go out and they was to just try and take Mickey and all that and uh, shout and swear and this and that. And it got quite, and I thought, think, I thought, what am I doing here? Why am I here? And okay, there's a, there's a lot of enjoyment in it, you know. And But I used to think, yeah, I, I must be walking away with Guna, you know, because even if I'm listening to this, I'm not getting Indeed. involved, yeah. And so I stopped. But again, you know what happened, like, like you mentioned earlier on, we've all been through that path. Maybe it's, uh, some teenagers will be watching, yeah. Your parents have gone through that. We've all been through that as well. And one of the best things that you can do is make that decision yourself. Don't get influenced. And then sometimes I've been in a situation where I went to, I, I, you know, I didn't go back to my, my parents, but I went back to my Qadi Sahib in the, in the masjid. And you know, you, you had that and you think, no, I need some help here. You know, and these friends, well, what was happening is they were from the madrasa environment. But it's like, Cholo aji let's go here, let's go there. And you think to yourself, no, I don't think this is right. But for you to, to make that decision, sometimes you need an adult's help as well. Mm -hmm. You know, go and ask your, your teacher, your parents, and they, you know, they can help you come out of that situation. You see, Habasa, you've got to accept one reality to be able to change things. And that reality that you've got to accept is peer pressure. Yeah. There is peer pressure. Yes. I'll tell you why. I'll give you an example. You've got an Islamic brother who wears an new into the mahal. Yeah, so, so eventually, you know, when you've been in so long, you, you start to question yourself, why am I wearing a mama? She was saying I'm wearing it because it's the Sunnah of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But that wasn't the niyat right at the beginning. It was like, I'm on a madni kaf, like everybody's got an imam Sharif on. I've got to get I'm one on. And, you know, I, can somebody help? I could, you couldn't even tie it. So you just wrapped it around your head as you could, yeah? I, I'm, I'm wearing, you know, um, uh, jeans. Everybody's got salwar kameez on. Or everybody's got jubba on. Everybody's got madni labas on, yes? Yeah? So right. And then I'm walking around. My pockets are empty. Everybody's got the, the Maswak Sharif on there and you know the Maswak Sharif was there and everything else yeah and the uh, Shajra Sharif in the top pocket and the green comb. Yeah I feel a bit odd and mm. that's peer pressure. Yeah. But it's a good one. Good then. peer pressure yeah. right and then so that's what influences us. So it's like namaz time and everybody's dropping everything they're doing and they're running to namaz. I've got to do the same. That was peer pressure. This weekend messages flying about we're going on a Madni Kafla. We're going to Birmingham this weekend. Oh, it's going to be a good laugh. It's going to be really enjoyable. We're going to learn a lot. And now, yeah, I've got to go. I've got to go. You know that when they're driving up, the Islamic brothers will listen to Nath, will listen to a beyond, and we'll go there. That's peer pressure, but it's good peer pressure. Yeah. And we, you sat there today, hand on heart, from from where from where you were to where you are, isn't it the beautiful peer pressure of Dawat Islam? Is Alhamdulillah. There? You know, there's a lot of uh, choices that I had made, and Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah Taala for giving me the opportunity to make the wrong choice. So, if, Mashallah, our teenagers who are watching this, please, there is no, uh, as they say, uh, and you try not to take this peer pressure on too much because you are free. Alhamdulillah, try to make your own decisions. If that, if you think that you need an adult's help, there's so many Dawat Islam. Islamic brothers, mashallah, Harun Bay does that all day, I do that all day, many Islamic brothers come to us, talk to us, and inshallah we'll give you a way out. You see, peer pressure is going to affect your life. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, it will affect your life. It's now up to you to build the environment Make where sure. it's good peer pressure. If you know, you if, if, you're, if you're in a state where, you know, your friend's smoking, you don't have to smoke. If they're going out clubbing, you don't have to do that. But when you do do that, you made that choice yourself mm -hmm. now. And if anything bad happens, it's because of your choice that you've made. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Alhamdulillah, Azawajal, Dawat Islami is an environment. You know, I would request all of you to come into Dawat Islami. You know, don't think Dawat Islami is an organization where you have to wear the Imam Sharif, Dari Rakwasanya, they're going to force me. Nothing is forced here. But what what you'll have is you'll have a good environment. You know, well, that as well. I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but a lot of brothers they've come into the Madni Mahal and they come to the Madni Mashras and initially they had you know no beards or very and they felt they felt left out. Mm. And then you know after a few weeks or months and they, initially they were quite resistant. Oh no 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 I, I'll decide when I would decide. And then one day suddenly Alhamdulillah Dari Sharif appears on their face and it looks beautiful. You, you know, know I, and yeah. that's that's in my mind if that's peer pressure I know. That's the best peer pressure you can have in the world. And you know, Imam Ghazali Rahmatullah, he says, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, but yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of the amal that we do, 
start off with Riyakari. They start off with show. So you might be, I might be in an environment where I've got tennis line brothers and Madhni Kafala. And I think, yeah, look at them all. They've all got beautiful beards. Yeah, and I feel a bit odd here. And, you know, I think I should keep a beard as well. Yeah. And maybe I started off, I mean, I'm just summarizing, but uh, maybe I started off thinking, I need to, you know, be like these brothers. Yeah, I need to wear an Imam Sharif. I need to wear a Jubba. I need to wear it. I need to have the Dari Sharif. I need to talk with, like in the Dawat Islami Istalaz. And you know, mm. you remember in the early Madni Kafras, we used to try and learn the Istalaz. Yeah, and yeah. we used to try and copy. We used to get a little paper. Little paper. And, then they used to, and we used to, to, think, we used to think, that's cool, man. I wish I knew all the Dawat Islami Istalaz. And, yeah. and then you used to try and make every second word, you know, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And maybe, you know, Allah uh, uh, forgive us, but sometimes it it was like you were trying to show off that you know you you knew something and yeah. but gradually what happened is that little it was it was nekuki nakalbi so right. you were copying the right people and that kind of took over your life and suddenly it, it opened Allah Azza blessed you and your mind opened, you opened up, and you up thought, Subhanallah you know I, this is this is the peer pressure I want. we went on a Madani kafila Rabbi once and the Islami brothers you could see that. You know, they're under that pressure of, you know, because we're this person, because it, it, it was their respect for me. And, you know, but they weren't opening up, you know, it's like, Ji, whatever you say. And one day I went into the room and I go, walk off, bro, what's happening? And they're like shocked, you know, uh, we, never, we, never, we never knew that you're going to speak like that. You speak Look, I'm one of you guys, man. Forget that, you know, Alhamdulillah, we're all together in this. And inshallah, we're going to help one another. And to be honest with you, this is what the Outer Islam is about. We're all friends. No one, you know, got any tanzimi zimedariya there. But the thing is, we're all equal, alhamdulillah. You know, this is the beauty of Islam. Now, Harun Bay, moving on to the next one. We've got parents watching this as well now. You know, parents are growing, uh, uh, they have teenage children growing up, daughters, sons. You know, if them children fall into a peer pressure, the ulama Kiram, the Buzurgan Adin, they say that the first person that they need to turn towards to is the parents. What would you do if you were approached by one of your children? What advice would you give your children? I, I was looking at this earlier because I was reading something and it basically said that one of the most powerful influences on a child is not the peer pressure of society and outside. It is actually the parents. Mm. But if they take it seriously. Gee. Problem is, a lot of the time, when the child is at the right age, we do not influence them enough. And once they get past the certain age, and once they've developed this peer pressure from outside, you know, he's got his mates now, he's 16, he's 18, and the mates are influencing him, the drugs are there. Then we try to influence him with the danda, yeah? We yeah. say, right, Una, you put the, you've got a behavior, and it doesn't work. And what they write is this. As the child uh, is kind of in his early days, you want to set the examples and you want to be the pressure. The, the family needs to be the support mechanism and the, the social pressure that it creates. So let me give you an example. As the child is growing up, you know, Imam Zali writes this as well. The child is like from the age of five is a blank sheet of paper. What we do is we think, you know, when he makes mistakes at the age of six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. That's what we say, don't we? So he'll get, he'll be fine when he grows older. But that doesn't actually happen. What happens is this. In those early years, from 5 till 11, maybe up to 12, do you know who the most influential people in a child's life is? The parents. The parents, yeah. It's not the television. It's not the games. It's not social media. It's nothing. The parents are the most influential people. And in that age, they can do whatever they want. Yeah, they can make this child the character of the child, whatever they want. If they instill in that child the Quran, the Sunnah, the respect for parents, the danger of drugs, the danger of alcohol, Juma is important. You, they, that child will grow up to think Namaz is the most important obligation of the day. Reading the Quran is most important. And I'm going to give you an example that you're going to relate to. Do you know a lot of youngsters in this country, you know, from an early age, one of the things that the parents emphasize is Juma. Jumanji. Right, so you will get a lot of these youngsters who are far from Deen, don't read namaz, don't do anything else. Maybe you know they're not very uh, good with their parents. But at Juma time, they'll park their racing cars outside and they'll come in and pray Juma. Why? Because from an early age that's been drilled into Juma. Mm -hmm. You can't miss. 
Gosh, ke just Juma. Because the problem was Dad only read Juma. Yeah, that's the problem. The problem yeah. was that Dad only took out the Quran in Ramzan. So they do. They give everything up in Ramzan because that's what they saw. But if you do that day in, day out, every day, every morning, your child from the age of five, six, seven, eight, you are the biggest influence. And once they get to that stage of 10, 11, 12, because of the six years that you've influenced the child, mm -hmm. nobody, everybody can try from outside. They will not be able to penetrate the, the beautiful kind of protection that this child has that you've given them because you've given them those strong morals. And what they've grown up with is this. They've not taken their etiquettes, their morals from their friends. They've not taken them from society generally or anywhere else, or the television or the internet. They've taken the morals from Islam. The Islamic code, mm -hmm. the Sunnah, the Quran. This Sunnah. is their life. And that, you know, the noor of that. Say, for example, you did that every day and the child didn't learn anything. Just the noor and the blessings and the light of that would give them guidance. And we always say, you know, there's an old saying, okay, those children who have grown up in the environment, of, a Madni environment at home, with namaz, with Quran, kept them away from all these film and drama, all this thing, yeah. Those children, you know, what we used to say is, you know, even if you throw them upside up, up, they'll always land on their feet. It was a put it of something like that. So the, the 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 moral is that they will always have a firm grounding. It comes back to parents. Another thing is Arumbe that you know parents especially, we need to understand that you know like you mentioned that a lot of uh, peer pressure is from home. So don't expect too much from your children as well. You know, and one of the there was a survey that I was reading this morning when I was preparing for this as well, and it says that you know children. Uh, you know, uh, under so much pressure from home, you know, especially with your exams are coming up, you make sure you better get some good marks and all that kind of stuff. Now, what happens is children, they're always going to be scared, you know, if I don't get good marks, what's going to happen? I was talking to a friend of mine and he was saying, like, oh, my son doesn't pay attention at home. He doesn't even, you know, all he does is just play, play and play. You know, Bafsa, please, can you come down sometime and talk to him? All right, I will, yeah. I goes, how old is he? He's six years old. Oh, yeah, he's only six years old. And you're worried about, you know, that this is his playtime. Yeah, let him grow up and then we'll think about it. And, you know, so there's this peer pressure from home that if I don't do good, my parents are going to be, you know, angry with me. You see, this is the beauty of Islam. It teaches moderation. You know, there, there are Ba's parents who go OTT. <laughs> and they think, right, you've come home from school. Right, have something to eat and go upstairs and start doing your homework. Yeah. Right, in five o'clock is madrasa time. We'll, we'll take you to madrasa. Seven o'clock you come out, come home, have a roti, and then you can do some more reading and you can do some more work. Yeah, and that's where you can go to sleep. Yeah, and at weekends, yeah, you got to do this, this, and this. That is torture, yeah. and your child isn't going to do it. I had, I know one person, a friend of mine, his father. Um, my Allah well raised the ranks in Jannah oh, and they passed away a few years ago but they used to lock him in the room and say right oh, Saturdays and Sundays and say oh, right yeah. you've got to do your work do Dr. Banna or something like that mm -hmm. yeah and the poor lad honestly nearly lost his mind you know some, uh, one, one father I was talking to him and I goes uh, okay you want your he goes look I, I've got plans for my son I want him to be this I want him to I goes look end of the day you you work in a factory why are you putting so much pressure on him let him decide what he wants to be and he doesn't have to be that whatever the father does the son's got to do the same as well give him that guidance you know, show him that you know there's all these options you know they, they get these options from school kids come back excited you know I remember my kids come back you know what do you and I basically you want you know, I, I think Buttar, you should should be this but end of the day that's your mashwara to them that's just a guidance let them make the decision one person said to me i was with my little one and he said uh, hey, barista, so I, you know, barista, I said listen i'm a bit selfish so i says uh, he, i want him to get a good education don't get me wrong i want to get a good job yeah but i'm going to try and do something which means that i can benefit from what he does yes, he sure. said what i said i'm going to try and make him a hafiz of quran because hafiz of quran bansina it will help me in my grave, in the hereafter, on the day of judgment, yeah? If he's a doctor, barrister, or engineer, he's not going to help me, so I'm sorry, I'm a bit selfish, yeah? I'll try and make him that as well. Indeed. But first of all, I want him to become a Hafiz of Quran. So, and uh, call me selfish, but that's... <laughs> no, that's mashallah. The thing is, Harun Bey, uh, at this moment of time, yeah, we've got children who are growing up in an environment. We, you know, okay, we need to educate them in the dunya as well, but your deen should be the priority. If you don't give priority to the deen, what's going to happen is that these children, you know, if 
if you p p pressurize them too much, you're going to lose them. And I know, I know children, when they've uh, failed their exams, you know, my dad doesn't talk to me anymore. He's swearing at me all the way at home. Why, why do you we have to do that? We don't recognize, for example, that not all kids are academic. Mm -hmm. Right? There are some, people have different talents, yeah? So, uh, there are some kids who you have to coerce into education. Yes, you have to get them, make sure they do their homework and everything else and keep the temptations down. I'm not arguing against that. But sometimes there are some kids who are not academic. And what we do is they'll come, they go to school, they've tried, but they've not done very well. Mm -hmm. And we'll say, no, Putur, you're going to college and you're going to try and do something. He's not going to university. And it, the, this, this poor kid will go to college and he's doing some, something like a foundation level diploma, which means nothing, but it's just to please the parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he, they'll say, right, everybody else has gone to university. Two women put through university. Yeah. So he gets uh, enrolls on a course, takes on debt for course fees, and the course itself is, is not going to get him a decent job. Yeah. And yet there are others. I know one because um, his, his uh, son was probably a couple of years younger than me, and you know what happened? He didn't do well in school. And he sat him down. I still admired him. He said, but person again, do you want to go to college? Tell me the truth. I don't want you going there dossing about with lads, yeah, and after three years, then you're going to work. He says, if not, I'll set you up a business. Yeah. If you don't want to do it, tell me now. And he said, Abadi, I'm not interested in this. I can't do it. It's not for me. He said, okay, set him a business, yeah. And mashallah, he's been running that business for 20, 25 years, and he's doing very, very well. And so, you know, your child might be a, make a, one of the best electricians and earn a thousand pound a day. He might be a brilliant plumber because he's good with his hands. He might be able to do other work, mm -hmm. and you're trying to make him into, you know, a barrister. It won't work. And so there, there are. You've Again, we need to understand our uh, as, as parents. We drive our yeah. children away. Yeah, we, we, that, that's what I was going to say. That we, we we make them so scared that then that relationship with the child is not there as well. They're always scared of you. You know, there are uh, uh, some parents I know. You know, and I've, I've mentioned that to him that, look, please don't be forced. You know, when you're going to someone's house and the child comes, he gives you salam and he walks out. Basically, he can't even sit in the same room with his dad. You know, or if it's a daughter, she can't stay in the same room with the with the mother. That shouldn't happen. Your best friends should be your mother and father. You should have a, a, a you know, my little son, alhamdulillah, has become a hafiz, yeah? Ashram. But the eldest, he hasn't. Now, if, uh, if I think to myself, you know, the eldest can't do it. But alhamdulillah, he's good at what he's doing. You know, he's got that jazba, mashallah. He wakes up in the morning, he'll read his madani qaida, he'll read the Quran, he'll, in, in, uh, the, we had a course on Saturday, mashallah. <laughs> you know, he, so alhamdulillah, so we'll, uh, let him do what they enjoy, and inshallah, they'll do good at it, good at it yeah, as well. You, the, the other thing that I want to emphasize is what we're not saying is give him freedom to you know what I mean? We're not saying give him the free run. There needs to be that fatherly figure, the father is the officer of the house, and there needs to be that dar as well. Yeah. That fear, if we do wrong, we used to have that fear. <laughs> we knew, and Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, uh, Amiji used to kind of scare the hell out of us, yeah? Mm. They used to say, right, if you did something wrong, right, you, you've had it now, your dad's going to have you now, you, you know, how dare you do this, or anything you did wrong, yeah? And whether dad did anything or not, it dried right now, and you used to, it used to play on your mind, and you used to say, you know what no. I mean? And that sort of thing is very important in a household, that father's daddy, yeah? but don't take that too far, because when you pull the rope too tight, if it snaps, but you you lose it. Yeah. What it is, there is a time for you know. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Allah Taala um, grant them sehat and dosi. My Kibla Walasa was very good with this because what he used to do is, when it was time for work, yeah, he was very strict. You had to do your homework. You had to write your pages. You had to do everything. You know, he had a routine where uh, my brother and I we used to had to write two pages every day in English and two pages of Urdu and everything else. Yeah, and he used to check the homework, and we used to think Dad knows everything. So you know, they used to say, "Can I have you show me your homework?" Yeah, which you used to have a homework diary. Yeah. So we used to show him like chemistry. So he used to look at it and say, "It doesn't any say it Yeah, go go and do it again. Yeah. And we'd just done it quickly. So we used to go, and we grew up thinking Dad knows everything about chemistry, physics, maths, geography, and history. And it wasn't. It was just Dad's hikmat amli. They used to say, go do it properly. And we used to go back and make <laughs> the, the eyes were dotted and the trees were crossed.
Jazakallah khairah, Harun bhai, subhanallah, azawajal. My dear Islam brothers and viewers of uh, Madani channel, some final remarks, you know, some uh, uh, Madani pearls to the teenagers especially because uh, this topic was for the teenagers. That, you know, you, this is your time that you can either make it or you can break it. You know, make it uh, your, your best choices. Don't get under too much peer pressure. And especially if it's peer pressure from your friends, please make sure that you don't fall into the wrong traps, making the wrong decisions because I've seen many teenagers and I'm telling you and this is not an exaggeration I've seen many teenagers yeah they've made the wrong decision they were with the wrong people and now they were where have they ended up in some of them have ended up in prison some have ended up on the streets and they're wandering around all day they don't even know what they have to do so please it's time that you made the, made the right choice. Inshallah, Azawajal, we're going to go towards uh, our next segment, which is the segment for personality of the week. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let your heart shine bright. Let us take you to what is right. Let your heart shine bright. Let us take you to what is right. Tonight with Madani Channel. Madani Channel. MashaAllah Azawajal, this segment, uh, why we chose this segment is that so that we can talk about the beautiful personalities. And for this uh, 12 weeks especially, we've chosen 12 prophets of Allah. And uh, last week we were discussing about the prophet of Allah. And today the prophet of Allah Azawajal that we are going to be talking about is Sayyiduna Adam ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. He is our father. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Ya Bani Adam, O children of Adam. Every, every human, you can say he's the father of all the humans. Ya Bani Adam. So Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he wasn't born, he didn't have a mother or father, but rather Adam alayhi salatu was salam was created by Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran, when he said to the angels that I want to create a Khalifa, you know, a vice guarantee in the dunya. And Adam alayhi salatu was salam was the one that Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned. And what did the angels say? The Quran testifies to that as well. And the Quran said that, Ya Allah, we are, we are, you know, doing your ibadat. Are we not enough for your ibadat? Because if you create humans, they will, you know, they will cause bloodshed and all these things. And Allah Ta'ala, He says that, Oh my angels, what I know, you do not know. Allah. So Adam alayhi salatu was salam, Allah Ta'ala created him with Adam alayhi salatu was salam. And then when he was created, Allah Azza wa Jal, He says to all the angels that prostrate to Adam alayhi salatu was salam. Now there's a very beautiful thing the scholars they mention here is did the angels prostrate to Adam alayhi salatu was salam? Yes, they did prostrate to Adam alayhi salam, but the nur of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was shining in the blessed forehead of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. And as Allah mentions in the Quran, the, all the angels, they fell into prostration apart from one. And that was not an angel, it was the jinn, it was the Iblis. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He says to the Iblis that, Oh Iblis, get out of paradise. Yeah, get out of paradise. And he was thrown out of paradise. Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he stayed in paradise. Paradise is the best place you can be in. Allah Ta'ala has promised paradise to all the people who do righteous things in the dunya. So you can't be in a better place than paradise. But Adam alayhi salatu was salam missed someone who was with his own jinns, his own type. So Adam alayhi salatu was salam, you know, from his left rib, Allah Azza wa Jal created the mother of all the humans. And that was Hazrat Sayyidah. Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha, they lived in paradise for as many years Allah ta'ala wanted them. And then Adam alayhi salatu was salam was sent to the dunya. Now here I just want to point out one thing. Sometimes you must have read them in the books as well. And maybe you've heard some people even talk that Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he committed that sin of eating the forbidden uh, fruit of paradise. When Allah ta'ala forbid him, he committed that sin. And ma'azallah, I was listening to one. 
someone sent me a clip and he was saying in a, in a, in a, in a Josh way that Adam alayhi salatu wasalam committed this sin and then he was thrown to the <laughs> world. Astaghfirullah. He was a prophet of Allah. All prophets are sinless. They cannot even think about committing a sin. So Adam alayhi salatu wasalam when he blessed this world, there are some narrations that say that Sayyida Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha, she came to the place called Jeddah in Arabia. Jeddah was where uh, Sayyidah Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha, she, was, uh, she came. And Adam alayhi salatu wasalam came into a country, Sri Lanka, on one of the mountains. And uh, I had a picture of that mountain, but to be honest with you, I wasn't quite sure if that is the correct one. So or else I could have shown you a, a photo of that. But inshallah, Azawajal, he did come to Sri Lanka. For so many years, they were looking for each other. And where did they meet up? They met up in uh, Arafat on Mount uh, Jabal Rahmat is called where all the Hujjaj on the 9th of Zil Hijjah on the day of Hajj when it is a Sunnah or it is better to be around Jabal Rahmat. That Jabal Rahmat, a small hill and you'll see a white pillar. That Jabal Rahmat is where Adam alayhi salatu was salam and Sayyida Hawa radiallahu ta'ala anha met. So Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he made a dua in the court of Allah azza wa jal. And with the words of the dua, the scholars, they mentioned that he said that, Ya Allah, forgive me for the sake of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah azza wa jal, he says, O oh Adam, how do you know about Muhammad? And he says, Ya Allah Azza wa because in paradise, wherever I would see every tree, every leaf, every branch had the name of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So from there, I found out that this was a blessed personality. And Allah Azza wa he says that, Oh Adam, it is because of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I have created you and the universe as well. And his tawbah was accepted. And long story short, Adam Alayhi Salatu was salam, Alhamdulillah, he had children, he lived in this world. So he lived for more than a thousand years. And then Adam alayhi salatu was salam, he left this world. Now, some narration, Amir al sunnah in one of his uh, uh, booklet, Rafiqul Haramain, he says that Adam alayhi salatu was salam's mazar is in Masjid Khaif in Mina Sharif. My dear Islam brother, we need to learn about these personalities. And one of the best uh, source how to learn about these personalities, read the Quran. There is so much mentioned about Adam alayhi salatu wasalam in the Quran as well. Read the tafsir Siratul Jinan, para number one, alhamdulillah, it starts off how Adam alayhi salam was created, the conversation that he had, you know, Allah azawajal had with the angels, you know, when Adam alayhi salam was created. It's a beautiful story. So please, you know, we've given you that start to learn about Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. I want you to go and learn and inshallah and you'll see that for yourself as well. Now, Alhamdulillah, Azawajal, now uh, our next segment is we, every week we, have, we talk about a book as well. Inshallah, Azawajal, today we're going to be talking about one of the famous books that was written by a great Imam of his time as well. And Harun Bay has that ready. So Inshallah, Azawajal, let's go towards our next segment, which is Book of the Week. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Let your heart shine bright Let us take you to what is right Let your heart shine bright Let us take you to what is right Tonight with Madani Channel Yeah, so the book that we're going to talk about today is Uyun al-Hikayat. MashaAllah. And it is truly an amazing book. Uh, Imam Abu al-Farj Abdul Rahman bin Ali al-Jawzi rahmatullahi. Oh, a very pious buzurg and a very uh, famous scholar. Um, from an early age, had a love for the deen of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, set out and had a special passion for deen. And his story is truly remarkable because he fell in love with 
Hadith Mubarakah. Subhanallah. And writing and listening to Hadith Mubarakah. And every time uh, there was a Hadith Mubarakah, he used to make special, the Imam used to do special kind of preparations to write and teach Hadith Mubarakah. What um, uh, Hazrat uh, Imam Jawzi Rahmatullah has done here is this. He has taken a lot of beautiful Hadith Mubarakah, a lot of beautiful sayings of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as well as the Vaqiyat of the Sahaba Ikram of the Awliyaullah, which are lessons for us. Basically, um, what he, I, I'll share with you what happens is this. When you learn about the pious predecessors and you learn about their life, it, it's almost similar to the topic we were discussing today, peer pressure. If you learn about all these pious predecessors and the way they live their life, it will influence you. It will influence you to act in a certain way. Now, um, what happened is one of the first hikayat that um, Hazrat Imam Jozi uh, writes was that um, there was a companion of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Hazrat Sayyidina Amir bin Sa'ad Ansari radiallahu ta'ala. He gets appointed a governor uh, by Hazrat uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala. And he gets sent, and there's no reply for some time. So he writes a letter, because there's no good news or bad news. He writes a letter and asks him to come to him with all the wealth in his governorship. So he um, travels to, uh, he comes immediately. He brings just the clothes he has and a few pots and nothing else. He comes to the court of Amir al-Mu'mineen and Amir al-Mu'mineen says, what have you brought? And essentially, you know, you seem to have walked it. He said, no, I didn't have a sawari. I didn't have a ride. He walks it from a long distance. And Amir al-Mu'mineen says, well, what mal have you got? Have you got any booty, mal of the or anything? He says, got nothing. I've distributed everything. So sends him home. And Amir al-Mu'mineen sends a, 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 a companion to go after him stay with him to see his halat and says if he genuinely hasn't got anything give him a hundred dinars this person stays with him for three days notices that this pious man of Allah has nothing tries to give him the 300 dinars he usually won't take them his wife says you know why don't you take them he's got to go nowhere to put them so he says okay she gives him a piece of cloth he puts them in there he runs out of the house goes and distributes it to the miskeen He's got nothing himself, so and then comes that. back and says to the servant, you can go. This, this, the servant goes back to the court of Amir al-Mu'mineen and says, I, I've given him the money. I don't know what he's done with it. So he calls, as the Amir al-Farooq calls him back and says, what did you do with the money? Initially, he won't tell him, and then when the hukum of Amir al-Mu'mineen is there, he says, I distributed it amongst the poor. I don't want it. Amir al-Mu'mineen then sends grain. He says, I don't want it. Sends him clothes. He says, I don't want it. And his entire Allah, life Allah. he spent uh, in this way. When he passes away, um, Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu visits his grave with a few companions. And he says to the companions, he says that, I wish that I had more people Allah, like him Allah, so that I could establish justice on the land. You know, there's so many beautiful stories in these books. And uh, uh, just, you know, just for the viewers of Madhuri Channel, at the moment, the book is in uh, Urdu and is printed in Urdu. But there is also a Hindi version of it on the website of there Pakistan. Is, uh, I, those who can read Urdu, honestly, I would recommend just one hikayat every mm -hmm. night before you go to sleep. It'll take you 10 minutes or 5 minutes, depending on how good your Urdu is. But really, it, they are eye-openers. Um, there, there was two more I just wanted <clears throat> to very briefly mention. Um, and it gives you an idea of the type of book it is. You, we'll all, we've all heard that story where Hazrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala had dusri at tisri kitabi padi si ya urdu ni. Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala at night used to do gasht of Madinah Munawwara and uh, they used to go and check whether anybody needed help or anything else. And one night when they're out, there is a mother who's saying to uh, her daughter that better, you know, add some water to the milk. To the milk yes. And uh, she says... Is that story in there as that well? That story's in okay, there as well. Mashallah. So she says, hey, look, better uh, uh, Amir al you know, the daughter replies, Amir, Amir al-Mu'mineen told us not to do that. And she says, well, Amir al-Mu'mineen isn't watching. <laughs> yeah. But she says, well, Allah is watching. So Hazrat uh, Umar Farooq hears this and he says to his servant Aslam who was with him that uh, remember this house and then the next day he, he goes home and he says to his sons which one of you wants to get married 
And his eldest two say, well, we're already married. So one of the younger ones gets up and he says, okay, uh, has it, I, I'll get married. And they go back to that house and they say that we want your daughter's hand because such Allah. a pious daughter. And he marries that uh, daughter to his son. And they then have a daughter and then that daughter is blessed with a son who is Hazrat Umar bin Abdul Aziz uh, so Allah. this is how you know, can you amazing. imagine the king of the time coming to your doorstep and asking for As your daughter so, that's the, uh, the and that's the then the last one I think we've got a few minutes left um, the last one is an amazing amazing um, vakya which, you know, even if you read it, I mean, download it tonight. Go to davatislami.net or Yunul Guides. You type that in, it'll come up and download it. Go to page 58 and I guarantee you, you will go to sleep um, mesmerized in the love of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because this uh, particular Hadith Mubarakah that's quoted here is truly a heartwarming one and an amazing one. Um, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'll keep it brief, we've only got a few minutes left, but mentions that there are some pious servants of Allah azza wa jal who are very humble and when you see them you won't recognize them and in summary basically nobody gives them um, in our sense the time of day but if they ask Allah for anything Allah azza wa jal will fulfill their needs and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then says that such a servant is Hazrat Yawasi Karni radiallahu ta'ala and then Aka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the whole world is describing Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and their beautiful attributes. And Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes the Huliya Mubarak of Hazrat Awasi Khandi radiallahu and also says on the Day of Judgment, people, the pious people will be going into Jannah. Hazrat Awasi Khandi will be stopped. Masha. He'll be stopped and they'll say, okay, no, you can't go into Jannah because you're going to stop here and do Sifarish. You're going to intercede for the people of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Ummah of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and take him into Jannah with you. Subhanallah. A lot subhanallah. more. Read the book, page Masha 58, Allah. this particular one. Ji. I think it's. Uh, Kayat number 13, but do read it, it's amazing. Yeah, mashallah, a beautiful book, and it's in two parts as well, Uyunul Hikayat, written by Imam Ibn Jozi, one of the greatest Imam <laughs> of his time. You can imagine him being the great Imam of his time, you know, such a great book as well. My Islam brothers and viewers of Madani Channel, you were watching our beautiful program tonight with Madani Channel. Our topic was uh, peer pressure. I just want to show you this uh, photo as well, and this is from Dawud Islami's social media, and this just summarizes our topic that we were discussing today. So you're going to see this uh, photo on the screen, you can see it now as well. That's when it relates to peer pressure as well, because majority of the mm. time, if you have your friends giving you that peer pressure to commit these sins, then what we need to do is we need to uphold our respect, our dignity, our be conscious, think to yourself what the result will be. I saw this and I thought, mashallah, azawajal, it's a great post by social media. And I hope, inshallah, azawajal, for the young lads, teenagers who are watching this program, please you know, say no to all the bad things that are happening and be straight, straight, straight and try to stay on the straight path as well. Jazakallah khaira. Inshallah, Azawajal, we'll see you with another topic and another personality, another beautiful book. Next time, same time, same place. Please keep watching Madani Channel. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let your heart shine bright. Let us take you to what is right Let your heart shine bright Let us take you to what is right